music purists like Beard and George that just hate on people that enjoy Machine Gun Kelly and Nickelback. Why can one not enjoy? Hey, I, I don't have anything against Nickelback. People who try to get served ahead of other people at the bar, that really irritates me because that tells me that that person only gives a shit about themselves. Because everyone's going to get served, you just have to wait another two minutes for your drink. I mean, like, how much do you need the beer? What is the one thing that you think you're going to need inside of an airport? A fucking luggage shop. I, I know where you're going. Why? Go. Why would you want to buy... Why is there a luggage shop at an airport after you've checked in? Prince Andrew. Hi, I'm Adam. And I'm Josh. And welcome, back, <laughs> welcome back to the Breaking Bread podcast. Arguably, and it has to be the most prestigious podcast ever recorded in the historic market town of Morley. <laughs> That's right. I was thinking about that before it's I came. It's got to be, yeah. I think you've, you're dead on Can we there, put that yeah. on the channel art banner? Somewhere like, George, you saw that out afterwards. How are you doing this week? Mate, yeah, I'm champion. Um, weather's dropped a bit on it. You can see we're both in hoodies again. Yeah. That Spotify, the Spotify deal didn't come through. Still hasn't come through, so we're, uh, here we are. Sun, sun's heating, but... Uh, and thanks to those two people that bought some Breaking Beans coffee. That means that we can... keeping us warm. <laughs> <laughs> Good I'll, stuff, though. Yeah, I'm man. liking it more every week. How are you, anyway? Yeah, I'm good. Bit um, of ASMR I'm, there. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit... Um, if I'm not as enthusiastic as usual this week, it's because I'm really tired um, mentally and physically. Um, <laughs> I, I won't go to... I, the same reasons as usual. Mrs. Beard snores a lot. I did some heavy eating yesterday, but it's too late in the day for, for me to still have the energy kick from it. So, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try b- bring the bring the fire, right? Make it a good one. That's good, mate. That's good. Well, Wait, haven't you been somewhere? We we almost like went. We, we I did some traveling oh, yeah. last week. I went down to kind of like, uh, uh, gl- kind of Gloucester area. Yeah, and we were chatting, right? For some reason, which we we, we seem to never be able to leave each other alone, but um. <laughs> I, th- I think I asked where you were or whatever, and you were in fucking Northampton, which is not too far away. Yeah, we were like five miles apart. We yeah. just, as you as you put, straddled each other down the country. That's how I did. I didn't mean, <laughs> it, it didn't mean for it to come out that way, but that's how it came out, yeah. Yeah, I was in uh, Northampton last week for- Northampton's th- pretty nice. Yeah, lovely. But food, food seems good there. Lots of good food challenges too. Is there I really? I know you're not really into that, but there's at least three. I might launch a channel. Oh yeah, there's uh, one of the big names. He's retiring soon. Oh, yeah, who's on me? <laughs> I'm joking, I'm me. joking, he's not retiring. Um, yeah, I went to Northampton, we do some work, uh, work down there for, for a client, and then in my infinite wisdom, I thought, whilst I'm down south, I'll message the dudes that I were on ship with and be like, oh, do you want to meet up and have a, have a drink and a, a meal or whatnot? And we agreed and they said, we'll meet in Southampton. So I figured Northampton, Southampton. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking 200 miles well, apart. It's been a while since I've been down that way. <laughs> Fuck. I, I thought it'd be 30 to 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, like Were not, it bollocks? Not like the same again? Northampton's a two hour journey. Yeah. Southampton's a four hour journey yeah, yeah. at least. Southampton's right. nice though. Have you, th- have you been to a different Southampton? No, I mean like not, all right, not the center. I mean, it's, it's not, it's kind of like economically a bit devoid of investment, but um, the actual, <laughs> like you down there, it's there. Are, I think it's kind of a clean, the outskirts of it are pretty clean and, uh, and um, I don't know. I was just trying to say something nice yeah, about Southampton. Yeah, I, 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 like I'm not going to back the fact, like, I, I've not been to Southampton for many years and I forgot how bad it was. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was, uh, there's somewhere out there, so that's all it matters. I think it's because there's a Nathan's there, which kind of makes it, you know, Nathan's hot dogs. Oh, is there really? There's yeah. only two in England. I don't know how well they, the restaurants are actually really nice. Like they've been heavily invested in, but the social media presence is so dog shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I think that's probably why I think it's nice. No, we're good. Yeah, go down there, saw saw, saw the, the guys again, and uh, came back up and enjoyed the the weekend where it was nice and sunny. But today it's it is not it's cold again now. Yeah, um, I want to start off the podcast. Um, so today we, in fact. I'll, I'll go, I'll go, I'll do it. We're not very good at this, are we? Um, we're going to start off every podcast with a, a comment from a previous podcast to get you guys involved. And uh, this week we've got one from a public uh, public subscriber. So it, it says they're publicly subscribed to us for the last five months on can you, YouTube. Can you be privately subscribed to people? Yeah, yeah. Get the fuck out of town. So like, if you want to subscribe to somebody but you're embarrassed about being subscribed yeah. to them, you can you hide can, that. Yeah, yeah. I did not know that. And he's publicly subscribed. He's publicly subscribed. What a man. So he's a guy called uh, David Berlani. Always good to listen to your podcast while working. It looks like you really enjoyed doing them. Good luck from Spain. And we're from international, sp- mate. From Spain, too. Viva España. 
How good's that? I, I said that before we started. But, um, <laughs> yeah, thanks, Dave. David? Dave? David. I'm going to call you Dave because we've we got to be on first name terms, right? If, if, he's, <laughs> if he's a big fan of the chat, uh, the, you know what, what we're doing. This this thing. Anyway. I, what, didn't, um, I didn't know you could do You could be privately subscribed I can't believe to you've got to nearly two million subscribers and not known that. Yeah, sorry, anyway. Puts like a little icon next to your name. If he says you publicly... Or maybe that's just in the back end. Or I don't know. I don't, what were you going to say? Sorry. Um, this, this podcast was your idea. So this was... Put room 101, can you uh, explain to those that may not know what room, or, run o, uh, uh, room 101 is? Renault 101. Renault. That might be like a, a, a brand of car. And um, Yeah, I can. Of course, um, <laughs> some people in... Uh, it's kind of like it's, it's finished now. It was the TV show, right? Um, named after, of course, the, uh, the, the, the famous concept from the George Orwell novel, 1984, which seems to become increasingly more relevant with, with each passing day. Um, but in, in 1984, it was a room into which you would go and be tortured, subjected to your greatest fears. But they made a TV show out of the concept and they would get, it was originally hosted by Nick Hancock, I think, and then Frank Skinner. And he would get some celebrity guest on and they would say things they want to put into Room 101. So it could be a physical thing like breaking beans coffee because it tastes like shit. Not joking. <laughs> it's, it's really good. Go buy it. Or it could be some more abstract like you hate people that don't pick up dog poo or something like that. Oh, that's a good one. I, that's came at the top of my head. But um, so we thought, or I thought, or we were on the long train journey home. Jo- Josh was trying to keep me occupied. And he said, come up with an idea for the next podcast episode. So I said, let's do like a Room 101. We can complain more than usual on the podcast. But, you know, tongue in cheek, try and make it fun. Uh, and so that's what we're going to do today. And I thought, for a man as pessimistic as you, this is a very entertaining idea of which you could be more pessimistic than usual. It's going to be so, like therapy, yeah. Yeah, this is, welcome to Beard's therapy session. I, I'll put my, uh, well, I'm going to say something rude then, but I'll put my <laughs> bottom dollar on, I bet we've heard half of yours before. I bet you'll come Probably. out with some. I try to pick new ones though. Yeah, all right, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, without th- further ado, let's say, let's kick it off, mate. Like, I want to I want to hear your first. All right, we're going to do it in this, in because the, the TV show Room, Room 101, what they would do is they would make their argument as to why these things are bad to right. the host. And he would say, yeah, okay, I'll put it in room 101 or not. Okay. So you're going you're to make the judgment. So I could say something and you could say, nah, I think you've been a little bit over. Oh yeah, that's fair. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, all right. I, th- I think that's a good way to play right. it. Right, okay. So we've put a lot of uh, time into this production. Well, I, we, <laughs> we I actually still, have. Uh, I still think we're pretty smooth to say we are recklessly unprofessional. <laughs> right, the first thing um, I got is hotel gyms. Now, I get the feeling this probably isn't going to, you're not going to commit this to Room 101. But if you just stick with me, I don't want hotel gyms to be put into Room 101 and hotels to not have gyms. Okay. Right. But what I hate is how bad hotel gyms always are. Right. Because I spend a lot of time on the road, obviously. And exercise is important to people. Should always be uh, the top of, of, of your agenda, even if you're a traveler. One thing that uh, keeps me... Um, from doing long long trips, that's my thing. I'm that's so twitchy. Like you. I know. I've, I've had like lots of coffee. <laughs> um, uh, one thing that prevents me from really long trip, you know, going out away for like two months, three months, is I need to get back to to train right and 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 be, be, follow some kind of regime which is fixed and purposeful. So what I'm trying to say is that when you go to a hotel, right, the gym is always dog shit. Right, it's always got a treadmill in there. Why does it have a treadmill? Why would a treadmill take up room in a gym? You could go for a walk outside the hotel, right? Uh, they've always got um, uh, like dumbbells that go up to fucking, I don't know, 20 kilos. And that's, this is not me being like, a, come on, what the <laughs> fuck can you do with, you know, like you can, what can you do with 20 kilo dumbbells, right? Especially if, you, uh, uh, if, you, if you're going to be training in a hotel, you'd probably take your uh, training to some degree seriously, right? I bet that George can't put a 20 kilo dumbbell over on a shoulder, like on a shoulder press. No chance. I don't think George could pick up a 20 kilo dumbbell <laughs> with like his entire body. But anyway, that's, that's the point though, that what I'm saying is that I think it's real. And that what annoys me about it is obviously when, when they build these gyms and equip them, they think they're doing the, you know, they might have fancy gear in there. Sometimes they have machines. I don't know why you put a machine in a hotel, but what annoys me is that it's really easy to have a very practical gym on the cheap because all you need in a hotel gym it's like a half power cage, which costs about a grand. For Can a you explain one. what that is, please? Yeah, just, well, if you go to a gym, you'll see racks, won't you? It's yeah. like squat racks, but they're not just squat racks. They're like power cages, chin-ups right? chin-ups and stuff. Yeah, you, they'll have a, uh, like a bar on the top. You can do a variation of chin-ups, pull-ups. Um, they'll normally have the uh, stoppers, right? So like if you 
like if George tries to lift, I don't know, anything more than a can of beans over his chest, <laughs> it's going to save him if he drops it. Um, and they're really, really cheap. Like I've got a decent one at home, cost me like a, th- a thousand quid. It's like a half power cage. You need an Olympic bar, which again, are not expensive, 20 yep. kilo long bar. And to service everyone, at like 200 kilos of weights. And then you're done. You know what I mean? So that's a, a full rack of dumbbells, even if they just go up to 20 kilos, are probably going to set you back like four grand or something. Yeah, yeah. So for all that cost, you could you could have a very, that's not going to service everyone's needs, but if you're in a hotel for like two weeks, that's going to keep you occupied, right? You don't need to kind of uh, draw back on your training or anything. So it just irritates me that hotel gyms are so poorly or wrongly equipped. So that's your case. That you yeah, that's I'm making my case. Yeah. I can see where you're coming from. I can't, uh, currently I might be able to assist you in getting it into room 101 <laughs> because my <laughs> biggest beef with hotel gyms, right? is not actually the, like the training. I, I think it's just, a, it's like, it's a means to an end. I agree. They could probably do better, but a bit of a treadmill if it's pissing it down. Yeah. Some dumbbells would rep it out. What, what, that's that sound. My problem is, right, hotel gyms are full, no offense to old people, but are full of old people, right? That's judgmental, Josh. The right, jo- okay. Old people can train as much as young people now, can. Yeah, they can, right? But the specifically, there's a, a, a specific criteria of old person, which would be the old man. And it's not the same old man, but I've seen <laughs> old men. I promise you, mate, right? More than one occasion, I've seen old men walking bollock swinging in the changing rooms and then using the public hairdryer on the ball sack. I've seen that. I think everyone's seen that, haven't they? I mean, that's that's just normal gym culture. That's not hotel gym. How like, fucking, like, how disgusting. I think it's just you don't give a shit when you get to that age. No, but I like, wouldn't be that man when like, I get that old. There's an old man with a big bush and his little acorn thumb sticking out of it. And then they get the public public hairdryer that everyone's supposed to use. And they've got <laughs> it to dry the little acorn and the little forest nest downstairs. It, 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 I this, feel this, sick. This, why does it always come back to dick and balls with you every single week? I would venture to I would venture to say that there is not one podcast episode where Josh has not mentioned balls or dick or jo- both. George, make a compilation. No, but seriously, like, yeah, but I, put hair dryers. I understand hair can be grown anywhere, but why? Why would why does, I if know. I want to dry my hair and you want to dry your beard? Why are they doing the downstairs beard? I feel like, yeah, pubs don't really take that much drying, do they as well? <laughs> like you wipe, wipe them with a towel a little bit. You just like, accept they're going to be a bit damp when you put your uh, your, your, your briefs on or whatever. But um, I don't know. That, that's my case for hotel gyms. Do you, do you can, think- we the, the, can we add the, the ball, prob- the, the ball no, for a problem onto that's it? Like, that's, a ho- that's a general gym problem, isn't it? If anything, hotel gyms don't actually have changing rooms. Usually. What? Yeah, because they know you're going to just go back in the lift up to your room or up the stairs and get washed in your room. All right. I, I'm, Most of them. That I'm denying that access to room 101. I feel like I can get much worse. Yeah, you know, you're probably right. Because I mean, I would rather the hotel gyms exist in the current form than not exist at all. So I, I probably made a poor decision in that argument. I'm just, it really irritates me how bad they, most of them are. All right, cool. I've got one for you. Go on, um, I feel like this might be a sharp one and it might not actually make the final cut, but um, Prince Andrew. I think we can just universally agree. He's got to go in room 101 at the very least, haven't we? <laughs> I thought that you're not going to find any arguments put up by me on that on that count. Banish him. Only Peace Express are going to complain that he's in room 101. <laughs> <laughs> there goes his Pizza Express brand deal. Uh, right, mate, I've got to your second one then. All right, so yours was really easy. So you, you're winning one deal. You've got one committed to room yes. 101. I'm um, not just going to... Uh, in fact, I'm not going to elaborate. Go on. Right, this, this next one is um, it's probably... I don't know if this is quite common. I, I put down when in, inaccurate word usage makes its way into the vernacular. By, and what I mean by that is when people, it starts to become a trend for people to use the wrong word in the incorrect context. The, the key, the one that's most annoying, of course, is literally. Why do people use the word literally just as a superlative? Like, I once heard Jamie Redknapp say on TV, this is on Sky Sports, right? A professional pundit say, the ball has literally just exploded off his foot. <laughs> now, unless this was a, a, a like a TNT football, it didn't explode, did it? It figuratively exploded yeah. off his foot, which is the opposite of literal. I'm getting mad now because this is like a grammatical thing. You like Sheldon Cooper? I'm going to try and relax a little bit. <laughs> you are. I don't want to give myself, uh, you know, uh, an aneurysm, but... So, so the word literally is so, especially if you like look, not that I ever do, but like if you if you go on TikTok 
The word literally is so inaccurately used, it brings me almost to tears. It literally brings you to tears. <laughs> it literally does. Yeah, it, it almost literally brings me to tears. But there are other examples. Like, I hate the when people say random. Oh, there's this like random, uh, this random guy came up to me. He wasn't random. What, what about that was random? You didn't select it. There's no ah. chance there of you. So, or when people say, oh, I randomly went to Tesco. No, you didn't. You arbitrarily chose based on a number of factors, to go to a Tesco. This fucking guy, they get a right insight into... I don't, weird, weird, I don't understand it. You just, it's like, it's, you're saying something which is more common than not the opposite of what you actually mean. I understand. I'd have gone more down, like, when people say... This better say, be going in room 101, I tell you. You know when people say espresso, or, like, they say... Is that more pronunciation as opposed to... That's just people getting it wrong. I can, I can kind of tolerate that because you, you, you're wrong, but I get, I get why you're wrong. Because, like, I mean... Mrs. Beard, God bless her. She <laughs> says so many things incorrectly. It's it's kind of humorous, but like she she doesn't say literally when she means figuratively, or she doesn't say literally just to make the point that she's making more intense. Can we literally banish this to one oh, room one hundred one? Then is that the correct? Yeah. Well, we, no, we can't. Can we? Because oh, we can figurative. figuratively Oof. banish it to because right. people will still use the word literal, and there's nothing wrong with the word literal or literally if you are being literal. All right, yeah. that's gone, mate. You, you, that was the only going to get. I'm convinced. I'm a bit worried, actually. That was supposed to be the end, but I thought, like, I, I, I need thought you were going to suplex me through a table then. No, no. Not yet. <laughs> I need to improve my grappling skills. <laughs> people, yeah, people comment that, actually, on YouTube now. I see, I've seen it on, t on Twitter as well. All right, so, like, my go then. Can so, you, wait, wait, wait. George, can you add, like, a, like a, a metal door clanging sound effect in the, uh, after, you know, in the edit after? It's not do, in. Do some fancy shit. It's not in. It's not in. Right, so get this then, Adam. I know this one's good. You thought you weren't going to get any angrier, but this is mine. So pitch this, right? You're at a, a concert or your favourite, like, public event. Yeah. You're there. You pay good money to get there. You think you've picked a good seat. You're watching. And then the lights go dim. And then they go, pick pick an artist. Tell me an artist. A music. Could you music, music, music yeah. artist. Uh, I don't know. Uh, do, do I want to see, like, a band that I want to see? You want a band you want to see, like? Oh, I don't know. Uh, Ghost. Uh, I wanted Ghost. to see them. Uh, uh, yeah, so, also, the, yeah. so the noise comes on, like, welcome to the stage. Ghost. And you're like, woo, you scream up and down. Like, you take, I, I wouldn't be doing you take that, your but... brow off and you throw it on stage, <laughs> right? And then you're like, you're just about to see him, but then you just see arms flying in. Oh, shit. <laughs> you see arms <laughs> flying in the air. Holding. Knock, knocking over the Breaking Beans coffee, which holding, would be on display. <laughs> <laughs> holding iPhones to record. Oh, what you're going to see, how much does that wind you up? Is that your? That's one of yours. That, this is mine. That, so, could, that could have been on my list equally. So you, yeah. you, you go into an event or public. So we went to the podcast show and watched Louis Theroux and we're like, yeah, you know, you threw your bra on stage, we were screaming and clapping. And as soon as you got into eye line, all we saw were arms popping up with iPhones. And you, you didn't I literally, you literally said, Oh, for fuck's sake. And like, put your, put your head in his hands. <laughs> Not quietly either. Yeah. And I'm like, oh shit, Adam's angry yeah. now. Well, I'm, if I'm going to, we could go into a bit more detail on that one, but I, I'm, I can already tell you I'm going to commit that to Room 101 without any <laughs> argument <laughs> because I, ha I hate it because actually the, I remember going to, uh, I guess you would call it more of a concert than a gig because I'm like a gig going guy, right? I, I used to go to like lots of small gigs. Um, um, you know when I was when I was younger and stuff, but I, I I've been to a couple of like arena shit. I'm looking at George because he's a music guy. Um, I haven't been at that many arena sh shows. You know, I don't really like huge artists usually that much. Um, but I took uh, Mrs. Beard to see uh, 1975, right? Uh, who were a little bit I I, I love them, right? They're, they're certainly the old older stuff, right? I mean, they're a bit softer than my normal taste. But anyway, <laughs> Lynn's, wants, Lynn's really likes them, right? So she wanted to go. So I took it. We're playing at the, uh, the, what's the big thing in Leeds called? Leeds Arena. Is that what it's actually called? First Direct Arena. For, yeah. Okay. We want to get the sponsor's name in there. Surely. <laughs> That's why they called it that. <laughs> but um, so yeah, I went there and oh, I, I swear to God, it was like the most frustrating experience, right? Because I'm sat down, which is, it feels weird to me at a gig to be sat down anyway. I didn't really mind it though. But as soon as they came on stage, I am not joking. I don't even know, like, they must have had that, the, the highest spec iPhone possible because there were people watching the whole gig, recording the whole gig through a phone. The entirety of it. And I just kind of thought, like, what's the... You could just watch it on YouTube. If you're going to watch it through your phone, what's... I don't, I don't understand the reason for it. And like you say, inconveniences the people behind you because then you just got to see your fucking phones. Yeah. I think... Um comedians have got it right because comedians when they're working their sets or doing the live shows they sort of uh i think they lock away the audience's phones you know to not leak content and stuff yeah and i think hook them away yeah i think they take them off them which is pretty cool isn't it yeah cool idea. they'll get like a little bag and a security bag um 
I think that'd be quite a cool thing for for the benefit of the people wanting to watch. Just because, like, if you're too busy concentrating on looking through the a, a lens or a, a, an iPhone, you're not actually enjoying the, the the gig. I think you and I can get a little bit more. Like we can appreciate that a little bit more because we know what it's like to commit to filming something rather than enjoying the moment. If that makes sense, you know, yeah, like yeah. when you know you've got to create a piece of content, you're like, fuck, you can't really take in what you're actually doing because you know you've got to commit yeah. to the product at the end of it. So I think that could be a way to. Um, I once saw which was I think I was I saw Goldfinger I think, um, not the song by Shirley Bassey, the you know the band Goldfinger. George knows what they are. I thought that wasn't that a James Bond film. Yeah, I thought you were about James Bond. <laughs> it was the James Bond film. Shirley Bassey did the did the Sagon Finger, <laughs> um, but but no, there's a band called Goldfinger. Anyway, and he said like he got pissed off at, at people on the front row that had their phones out, and he's yeah. like, "Just man, you're here to enjoy the moment, man. You don't you don't, you don't need documentary evidence of it, do you? Yeah. It's all right taking a couple of pictures. I don't mind that." But it's when people just like film the whole thing. It's like, why did you even, why, why come to the gig in the first place, you know? I agree. So yeah, I'm, I'm a bit, commit that to room and all. See, it's gone. Uh, let us know if you agree in the comments with that one or if any of these, like if you agree or disagree, get get chirping down there, let us know. I think no, nobody's going to, I think you'd be surprised, the, maybe, maybe Maybe the people that do the filming at, at concerts. It's, maybe it's like a young person thing. We're too fucking old. Um, <laughs> the, my, my next one is, uh, is a little bit more... Um, abstract right because i've called this is it my turn it's your turn mate yeah, yeah okay i've called can i have a little refill of breaking beans yeah, while i, I go through this I'm, I, I probably shouldn't have any more i'm done mate you uh, yeah finish that off is this is this dark and airy today or i know we're still on the uh blonde bag blonde oh. and slender oh this is you your uh your cafeteria is <laughs> leaking it's oh, dripping no. um yeah th- this one's a bit more abstract i call this twitter hot takes right and what I mean by that is, first of all, I want to say there's no bad blood between me and Twitter, despite the fact they will not give them a fucking verification. But no, I'm joking. Um, I quite like Twitter, you know, when it comes to like, say, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc. I quite like Twitter because I think it's um, concise, isn't it? You're limited with how many characters you've got, quite literally. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so you can have brief interactions with people. And I feel like I could be wrong in this regard, but I feel like that the prevalent IQ of people that use Twitter is maybe slightly higher than Facebook. Could be wrong, but there is still a lot of shit on there. What I mean by hot takes is, you ever notice those tweets that come from accounts that aren't, they're not necessarily like, you know, notable people, but they just do tweets to get like tons of likes right. and they'll delete tweets that don't get like a bunch of traction <clears throat> and they'll always follow the same formula. So it'll be stuff like, um, you all ever notice how Cocoa Pops are just chocolate rice krispies? And <laughs> <laughs> like just, wow, that is actually right. <laughs> You know, have you ever noticed that? That's a fucking hot take, is Or that? like, you all ever notice how gold is just shiny yellow? Oh my God, they're right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, to me, it's like the modern day equivalent of like shit observational comedy. You know when observational comedy was good in the early 90s? You probably don't because you were kids. But like, it was, there was a point where people would just remark. George wasn't even born. <laughs> he wasn't born. Uh, people would remark on things that were like, they were funny because they, they, they were true. Yeah. Right? But then it got shit because it got to the level where Peter Kay was just saying garlic bread down a camera lens. <laughs> and I don't even think he has Peter Kay, right? I'm not gonna, I'm not thinking him out, right? <laughs> From so. the man that sang a song called garlic bread. Yeah, true, but yeah, but you remember that skit when he's like, garlic bread? Garlic bread? Garlic, yeah. The, nobody on planet Earth, right, the, that's, that's three years of age or older doesn't understand what garlic bread is. That's not exotic to anyone. <laughs> garlic bread has existed since for, for God knows how long, right? So, and that, these Twitter like hot takes are just like the present day version of that. That are, they're supposed to be some, like paradigm shifting, some kind of mad um, uh, epiphany that you, oh yeah, Ch- Cocoa Pops are like chocolate Rice Krispies. Yeah, everyone knows that. Is, is that just me? George is nodding in the corner. I can't commit that one to. No, uh, nah, I feel like you I feel like you've got too much time on your hands. You know, like when you're filming eight minute videos twice a week, so that means you've got a lot of minutes <laughs> left to just get pissed off about. Like Twitter, uh, or like people's tweets. <laughs> I'm not. Like? I'm not committed that to. I mean, again, like this is open to the public. Like this is a. This is for everybody to get involved. So maybe we should write a list and let people decide whether it's a hot take. A hot take. <laughs> it's a room or not. I just want to see if I can find one on Twitter right. right now. I, I'm gonna say no though. Like that's that's a that's a solid no from me. Um, I feel like I'm being hard done to there. I'm sorry, but I, think, I feel like it's much worse things that we can send to room 101. You all ever. You all ever. Notice that you, 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 uh, you, your friends be getting married and you just sat there eating a uh, Subway watching 
Golden Girls or something like that. It's like, why, why do they always follow the same format, man? Like, say something insightful, which isn't just fucking nicked from someone else. You all right, mate? Yeah, I'm all right. This ain't good for your blood pressure, this, no, is it? No, it's not. That's, I, we need to film these in the morning when I'm a little bit more chilled and not <laughs> full of coffee. All right, so this is mine. So mine previously was about um, music or artists in general, yeah? Yeah. This is my hot take. So... This is, uh, this is this probably going to go down well, but the audience may be on my may side with me. No spoon, mate. I was just going to stir with my finger, but yeah, okay. Um. So this this. <laughs> so go this, on, go this, on. This, there's a certain uh, on, clientele of of human beings that are just dickheads about music, right? And I'm not <laughs> pointing any fingers. Gatekeepers, are what you're talking about. That kind is, of, that we, is that what we call them? Gatekeepers. I, that's probably the best. So. I'm Michael, not, not. Mike, if Mike was here, rest in peace, Mike, he would vouch <laughs> with me on this. But in our office, we've got two of these music purists that are just absolute fucking haters on people that just like. No, no, no. The, no. I think you've been, I think you've been uh, inaccurate in, in, in the, fr- the way you're framing this. Uh, all right. Statement. Okay. Oh, so like, so the, w- you, what you're talking about is people that don't like Machine Gun Kelly music. So like you fuckers, right? I, what I'm saying is music purists like bearded George that just hate on people that enjoy Machine Gun Kelly and Nickelback. So why can why can one not enjoy? Hey, I, I don't have anything against Nickelback. And also, I don't hate on you for liking him. No, I don't. All oh, right, okay. Well, so, you, so, so, so George Anger and Mike this week, he said he doesn't hate on me for liking Machine Gun Kelly. What's the... What's the, the I, like machine <laughs> I think that what you the way you're going wrong here is I get the concept I get what you're saying people that like gatekeep what is cool music and what yeah. is not but you, the fact that you've lumped me and George in there I think is 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 not fair because I, I don't I don't if you like whatever you like you like right and yeah. I might get, wind you up about it as a, as a bit of a joke but I think there is objectively music which is good even if it's music I don't like yeah so like I'm not massively into dance music but I know Prodigy is good right Objectively, I know it's good. Right. I don't like. Re- I don't particularly like. Uh, um, I don't know. Um, jazz music, but uh, who's somebody that's good at jazz? Judge. Uh, but Charlie Parker, right? He, he was a. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, anyway. Charlie Parker. I don't really like. I've seen Whiplash, right? Um, so I know it's good, right? But I don't. So I, I don't think I'm a. I, I kind of agree with you because there are people that say, "Oh, you can't like like this band." Like what was a uh, one back in the day? Like you, um, Chainsmokers. <laughs> Back in the day, chains. Was that fucking eight years ago or something? Um, could, no, yeah, but there, there, I think there are always bands that that like, if you if you try to tell me, for example, that you love the Cheeky Girls, right? You're probably gonna get ripped for it because I, they, they, it's, it's heavily produced we music. The cheeky which girls. They didn't write, even though they probably could have written it. Um, you so are I think the there, cheeky boy. Go on. Yeah, I think there is objectively good music and bad music, right? It's okay to be critical of music. Right. But I think there are people, I agree with you, and I think, I, I don't know if I can commit this to Room 101, but I think there are people that are overly critical and say, well, that's not cool. You should like this instead. But me not being a music like diehard like you two, for me to, to say I enjoy those two artists and you two go... Which was the ah, second shit. artist? Oh, Nickelback. Yeah, I don't. I think there's a common misconception that Nickelback. I mean, have you seen Chad Kroger's house on Cribs? This dude's doing well for himself. Why are Nickelback think... like a meme? Why are they? Why do? They, why are they meme so much? Because they are like, aren't they? You know, it's they are. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's a bit like it's like a hot take, isn't it? I think it's <laughs> stuff like that where people get hated on. It comes back around and they get like loved later on. Yeah, mm-hmm. like Rick Astley. Yeah, like people love him. This is the one episode George should yeah, have. Had <laughs> sorry, man. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, George. But no, I don't think. I think music gatekeeping is in some ways a good thing. So I'm not putting it in room 101 because I think there are people that objectively know enough to say that is bad music. That's good music, but you can like what you like. I don't think you shouldn't, ha- you shouldn't care about the opinions of others. So if you're saying we're wrong for saying machine gun Kelly's dross, then, uh, <laughs> dross. then you still listen to him, you know? Yeah. All right. So that's not going in room 101. That's a, that's a negative. I, no. Did you hear about the, the I heard like a, I think it was a hot take on uh, on Twitter actually, <laughs> where someone put uh, Machine Gun Kelly uh, got dissed so hard by Eminem, you had to switch genres. That's a funny hot take. Right? I couldn't even tell you like a, a, a Machine Gun Kelly song. I all, all I know him from is like, he, uh, oh, didn't he do a cover of something? Did he do a cover of like Misery Business by Paramore or something? Yeah. Yeah, because Travis Barker's just done, uh, he just produced his last two albums. Right, I, I didn't know he was even like an album artist. I know he didn't. He try and uh, say, didn't he try and fight Conor McGregor or something? Oh yeah, I think Conor McGregor, like just after Conor McGregor broke his leg, you know, in that fight, 
he was on the red carpet at some sort of event and he got into a kerfuffle with uh, <laughs> Machine Gun Kelly. But I don't think, I think security kept him apart. Conor McGregor could have squared his whole relationship with the public just by doing it. Oh, it man. By... It has splattered him. Yeah, pencil in the pub look. Well, that's my mate. So gatekeepers are not going in room 101. No. Oh, man, it's, my it's you, mate. It's you. Not that I'm condoning violence. I don't, I don't want Machine Gun Kelly to, to get hurt, <laughs> even though he's, he's named after a gun. That's another thing. Why would you call it, name yourself after a gun? Um... Oh, this is actually a good one. Pretty quick. I think it's probably going to be uh, a formality. Pe- <laughs> people who try to get served ahead of other people at the bar. So say you're in, you're in the bar, you're in, in the bar <laughs> on a Friday night. Well, you're, you're at a bar or a pub um, and it's a busy bar, right? So you queue in. Yeah. And of course, you know, it's, it's a high pressure environment for the bar staff as well. They can't always knows first. I hate when your people say, oh, good bar staff should know who's next, right? You can't be scanning <laughs> a fucking massive bar, right? So it's you. It's incumbent upon people to behave the way they would like to be treated, right? So if you're, you're waiting at a bar and you see somebody come up, you know it's after you, and then yeah. they try and get served before you, that, man, that, I hate that. There's nothing, um, well, I was going to say there's nothing worse. There are things worse, but like, <laughs> That, that really irritates me because that tells me that that person only gives a shit about themselves. So yeah. if that ever happens to me, if somebody comes up next to me at the bar, um, or if, if somebody comes to me, when say you're at the bar before me, yeah. I'll say, no, this person's first, right? And I'm not virtue signaling or whatever. I'm just saying that's the right thing to do because everyone's going to get served. You just have to wait another two minutes for your drink. I mean, like how much do you need the beer? And I, I'm, I do agree with you on that. I was, in fact, I went in Southampton last week and uh, I, I was I was I was stood at the bar. I only needed three drinks. There were only three of us. And I stood there for, I think, I, I think it were about 10 minutes. So we're, and this, and this is like a, a Friday at three o'clock. It, sorry, no, I want to say Friday at three o'clock. It, it weren't busy. Yeah. But there was one bar, bar, bar staff on, like one member of staff. And I waited 10 minutes, but there were a lady in front of me. And, and then the, the, like the, these people start like mingling, you know, because the queue were getting bigger. And yeah, I, was getting, yeah. I felt like you actually, I was getting so fucking angry. I was You're like, making me to be like, some like why is it taking tyrant? so long to get this drink? But as soon as the, the two in front of us got served, and the dude looked at me. I did say, "Oh, this lady was here first. Yeah, and it, good man. But that's the right thing to do. But I, I was like, <sighs> the only time I ever used to, I got kicked out of a bar. To, uh, well, two, I've been kicked out of a bar more than twice. But two times I remember, top of my head, were all, all were for like calling somebody out for doing that. Oh, really? Yeah. For, I remember one time there's a bar in uh, where it was like the Leeds Met Student Union, right back in the day on Friday nights. So you used to have this night called Star, right? I don't know why they call it that, but it was like they just played like metal and punk music, right? couple of guilty pleasures, bit of uh, 303 and Kesha. When it's, you know, <laughs> two o'clock in the morning, you've had a few. It's all right. Anyway, um, and I remember like I was went to the bar and this dude came up way after me, way after me. And then the bomb is w- working away towards me. And this guy leans over the bar. He's like, yeah, three fucking tropical VKs or some bullshit. Um, <laughs> and I, I just, I said, nah, that's that's not happening. I said, it's, it's, it's me like that. And it, then he kind of, he got... A little bit aggressive did, about did it. Did he puff his chest up? He did, yeah. And he was a lot bigger than me. And I'm I'm a lover, not a fighter, right? You know this about me. Uh, but at the same time, I, the things are, are more important than your own personal safety, I think, a principle being one of them. Um, so, I, I, yeah, I, I just, just said to him, I, I won't repeat what I said to let's him. Let's dance, bitch. But, like, uh, no, the funniest part about that was he was like, if you've got a problem, let's go sort it out outside. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? The Wild West? <laughs> <laughs> We're um, in a film. What the fuck's going on? And the, the funniest part was, like, I, it, it kind of diffused... I got my drinks and um, then 10 minutes later, I got kicked out by the, the bouncer or bouncers who said that I'd been uh, behaving aggressively. So he'd, he'd gone over and complained about me. Sir, this man's trying to get served before. What a bitch, man. Yeah. Um, well, I don't want to say that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah but, um, so yeah, I hate when people just wait your turn, man. Wait, it's just like queue jumping. It's the same thing, man. Just don't do it. Did we already commit this one? Have we not committed that? Can we commit this to uh, root? I'll commit that. <gasps> not many are getting knocked back here. We, we, we're putting a lot in room 101. Maybe we should have had a quota, really. Yeah, we probably should have done it, shouldn't we? Oh, well. Next time. I'm sure we could get <laughs> at least seven more episodes out of this concept. Uh, am I going it now? Is it? Yeah. Okay. Right. So, Adam, you're a <laughs> travelling man. Yes. So you, you get yourselves, you go, right, I'm, I'm going to America again this week. I mean, I'm not a nomad. I, I'm like, <laughs> I have a house, so I do travel a lot, yeah. And you're, uh, you rock up to airport, you check all your shit in, you yeah. go up to lounge, you yeah. get your free champagne, you go down and think, oh, I'll, I'll have a bit of a shop. You know, I'll go for a look round, right? <laughs> <laughs> what is the one thing that you think you're going to need inside of an airport 
a fucking luggage shop. I, I know where you're why, going. Why? Why, why, oh, why? When you've got all the way to the airport, you've packed your bag, you've checked it in. Oh, look at that suitcase there that I can fit. <laughs> You know, a fucking a wheelchair in. I'll buy that because it's massive and it's on sale. Why would you want to buy? Why is there a luggage shop at an airport after you've checked in? What? Easy there, war child. <laughs> You're getting as mad as I was. Um, yeah, I, I, this isn't good for our health. This this episode. Maybe we shouldn't do anymore. Um, I agree with you there. Um, but I, to me, that extends further because I don't understand why there are duty free shops at airports. Like, like you, you need cigarettes so bad that you're going to buy, like, shit tons of... And maybe on the way back... Yeah, because you can sell them then to your mates at school. But even then, the duty is not that much... They're not that much cheaper, are they? They're not, like, significantly cheaper to the point that you need to be a Dell boy and, like, <laughs> buy, you know, 400 of them, whatever. Um, but, yeah, luggage shops is a weird one. I, like, obviously, you get... W.H. Smith... Smith uh, W.H. Smith. That's, <laughs> that's commonly... Um, found at airports, right? Because they sell drinks and food and stuff, yeah. but also books... You're going to need those, right? Yeah, and you get like toiletries and stuff, can't yeah. you? A bit of links, Africa and... But I'm with you on that. I don't know. Unless, unless you're one of those people that you are going to buy shit tons of stuff and you need an extra bag to take all the stuff back. But you can't check it in at that point. You're already past the point of where you go, can I put this in the aeroplane, please? Yeah, but if you've got... Oh, yeah. So, I mean, I, But if you... Maybe if it was a modestly sized suitcase that qualifies as hand luggage. But that's that's such a... I a, think a, we're a, missing something here. There's, there's got to be a reason, I think, why that they, why they're, they're there. There must be something that we're missing. You know? I don't know, maybe. Because even, right, because I thought, well, what if? What if you're on your way to the airport, right, and the wheel falls off? You go, all oh, right, I need a new suitcase. Yeah. But you're already past the... You've already had to hand it over, so you don't even have your shit with you to, to swap it over. Maybe they're just trying to capitalise on the fact that you're going to be high on the... You know, when you get back... Because you don't get to of all the other things that you know. could have. What else? So, if we took out the luggage shop, which is completely unnecessary in an airport, what would you put in its in its place? Like, I know this is a bit on the spot, but like, what do you think could be a better alternative? More, more bureau de changes, you know, that Travelex, because they wipe the last few times I've been there, they've, they've been like, oh, I've only got like two hundred dollars. Why would you get that at the airport? That's just bad planning as well. Yeah, I'm just lazy though. That happens <laughs> to me. It's, yeah, when you, you get, get the, a horrendous exchange, man. Rate. The last time that happened, it was literally one for one, and I'm thinking. What? I just started laughing and the, the woman started laughing. She's like, I'm sorry. I'm like, it's not your fault. I'm just, it's, it's funny, isn't it? That I'm, I'm so ill prepared. But it makes me laugh when you go there and they're like, when I went to Canada, actually, this was funny. I went to three different um, stalls in the same airport because they didn't have Canadian dollars. I thought, it's, surely it's not that uncommon that people go to Canada. Yeah. The worst thing I think about airports like shops is when you go through the duty free, the first thing when you get through, uh, you know, security. And they just stop blasting fucking perfume at you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it, man. Stop blasting Sauvage by Christian Dior at me or whatever. Yeah, you, then you get like that weird mix when you're on the plane of just like all the different perfumes yeah. and farts. Yeah. Did you know? <laughs> did you know that the reason people fart on airplanes is because the change in cabin pressure causes the gases in your stomach to expand? Did you know that? I, I mean, I, I, I don't notice that I, I fart particularly more. Bollocks, mate. More on an airplane. Yeah, I think, well, I mean, I, just probably I think it's pretty that anyway. common. Maybe this, maybe this isn't covered. I, I, I can I, believe that though, yeah. Yeah, I think that's, that's a thing. So um, did, we, did we decide if that we're going to use your, your I decision? I feel like, I don't know if we can, because there might be a reason that it's there that we're missing. The whole, like, you know, when people say, can't we just like disinvent wasps? But they might be doing something to the ecosystem to keep it stable. I can't, I don't think we can. People, people might need it. All right, we'll put that in the maybe pile. Can somebody confirm in the comment section of wherever you choose to consume this content? Yeah, I don't, I don't Maybe know. Maybe it's something that works at an airport. Maybe we're missing a reason why that exists. Right. Your go then, mate. What, have you, what else have you got? Look, you see, like, how, you're so unprepared. I am ill prepared. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I did, I put in there fad diets, but I, can't, I feel like we might have talked, touched on that in previous yeah, episodes. We've done that to death, yes, haven't we? So, so we just, uh, this is, um, I put spatially unaware people. Now, let me just qualify that first. Of course, I'm not talking about people who are um, suffer have some kind of ailment or people that are, might be blind, for example. I expect you to be spatially unaware to some degree if you cannot see. Um, <laughs> but what I'm saying is people that are willfully spatially unaware, people that are... It just comes down to people being self-centered, I think. So people... You know, like, what winds me up more than anything is if you've got, a, this is why I don't shop at big supermarkets. I just got like a, a small grocery shop, right? You know, when you like, you go down the aisle at a supermarket and you approach the end of the aisle, right? Yeah. To turn left or right. 
to go to the next aisle. And you go to the aisle and somebody be blasting down at like 20 miles an hour with a trolley. And you like, like you, you could crash into them or whatever. If you approach a corner or you are walking past the corner of anything, you should be aware that somebody else could potentially come around the corner, right? Similarly to people, you're walking down the street and somebody stops right in front of you. Because <laughs> you know, they're on their phone or something like that. Yeah. Think that that sp- sp- spatial unawareness, people that are, I, 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 I shit you not, right? The, in fact, the last time I went shopping, and I think I vowed never to go to a big Asda again. I was, um, I was at Asda, um, at Glass Houghton, right? Yep. You know, the big one. I do, yeah. And I don't know what I was, I was buying some stuff and I went down the aisle and somebody, no word of a lie, had the trolley, um, sideways. What's the word? Yeah. Uh, perpendicular, perpendicular to the, yeah. the, uh, the aisle, right? And they just stood there, like, looking at cans of fucking cat food or something. I don't know. Like this. Why are I'm you thinking, on cat food aisle? You haven't got a cat? I, I don't know. Well, I'm just trying to think of something you would be shopping for. Uh, cans of tuna or something. I don't know. And they're looking at this, uh, whatever they're trying to buy. And I'm thinking, like, did you willfully try to make your footprint as big as possible? Like, so, and it, I, I've done that a few times where I, I feel like you shouldn't have to say, excuse me. No, nah, yeah. Like, I, th- you could have just put your trolley right next to the aisle, right? Yep. I'm being aware of people around you. If people want to get in next to you, sorry, I'll move my trolley out the way, that kind of thing. So I think spatially unaware people. No, I, I do agree with you on that. Because I think, um, like you said, people with trolleys, people with kids, they just seem to just stop. Whereas like if I'm out with the child in a push chair, I'll pull to one side and get out of the way. But I won't yeah. just stop. Like rolling down leads city centre, you're like pushing a pram. I'm just going to stop. Just right middle of the road. I think I would make concessions for people with kids because you never know what's going to be happening, right? But I think people that... Um, are unaware of other people, right? Yeah. I think that just comes down to like basic humanity that people just think they're the center of the universe, don't they? <laughs> I don't want to look at George when I said that, but... I don't know if I can commit this though. Like, I know this does get people hot and bothered under the collar, but I feel like there's worse. It's I can't worse get stuff. it. There's worse stuff. Because the idea is that we're going to banish this forever, aren't we? And it's like... We, we're going to be like Thanos then, right? We're just going to be yeah. clicking our fingers and all, half the people on planet Earth have disappeared. Oh, shit. I, I kind of get you. Yeah, right, we, yeah. We're being a bit authoritarian here. Right, so let's let's go into the nitty gritty. Then this is mine, mate. All right, okay. Right. How long have we been going, Josh? By the way, <laughs> forty minutes. Man. Oh, loads of time. This will be a breakneck speed. Right. So there's what about this? Is this is a weird one, and you might disagree with me, but the psychopaths that put toilet roll on the toilet roll holder with the you know the piece of paper that rolls off that rolls off the back way. Oh, I do think that's weird. I don't know that. Like, I mean. to... Jump to judgment pretty quickly. I don't know if we could commit that to room. It's, what? A bit of a, no. it's a bit of a, it's, Mate. it's not something to get wound up about, is it? Really? Yeah, it's awful. It's weird. Why it's is it so odd. close to the wall? Like, yeah, yeah. I, you've got to like, I do wonder why people <laughs> do it. It makes me think like there's something off kilter with people that do that. Um, and I've yet to meet, I've yet to go to like a friend's house or something and see that. It's normally like I see it in public places or, um, but yeah, I do find it odd. I just think like, why have you done, unless you just want to watch the world burn, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like people that cut cakes, like the, you know, you see those like unsatisfying videos and it's yeah. people cutting cake the wrong way. Eating a pizza, crust first. Yeah. Uh, that's good. But, um, I did, yeah, I think, I think it is a bit odd that one, but I don't, I, I, I don't get that mad about it. It doesn't affect my, well, I just maybe. Just, I saw it. I went, like, I, I went to my, uh, I went to see my auntie and uncle this weekend and, and I went upstairs and for a wee, you didn't go, even go for a poo. And I saw it and I was like, <laughs> fucking psychopaths. I didn't even know what you were going for. <laughs> um, oh, tell me about your poo this weekend, please. Oh man. I knew, I knew, I should, I, I mean, I didn't take a picture of it, right? Because uh, I knew Josh would say, I knew George would like lose his breakfast and I knew Josh would say, put, say, put it in the <laughs> podcast, right? We don't want to say, but I did that. What I think could have been a world record breaking poo. It was the size of my fucking wrist. It was huge and it came out like whole, uh, which is mad because I, it was very rare given what I do that I actually even have solid poos anymore. But I said, oh, like, how's your asshole after that? He literally messaged you saying, I've just had a world record poo with the width of my wrist. And all I could think was, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, it was. It you was poor sphincter. It was a yeah. Well, I mean, it's just, I think it's used to it by now. <laughs> it's taken some punishment over the years. Um, so, so, are we committing the toilet, the toilet I don't paper? Think so. on the, I think that's been the, you're just nitpicking there. I think no. Yeah, I think there's gonna be. I'm excited to see the comment section of this podcast maybe because it's such. That, I reckon they're so divisive of these like uh, ideas that we've got. I think I don't. I think I think it's, I don't understand it, but I don't really want to. Say that people that do people that do that should be committed to room one hundred one. I think there are worse crimes to commit. I don't know if I'm keeping score of this, but I feel like we're about half and half, are we? I don't know. I don't we'll know. find out. Edit. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, Yoga, mate, have you got any got, more? I think you've got more than me. I think I might have one more. Um, oh, I had multi-channel networks, but that's kind of like, a, that's almost like a... Uh, uh, a video like in and of itself, I think we could. I feel like we've already done. Is that one of the ones that we lost on the cutting room floor? I think so, but I think it was a good one. So, so um, we'll we'll come back to that. Can I use fad, fad diets and just be really quick about it because that on, does yeah. really irritate me. Go on there. So f- f- when I say fad diets, I mean like um, you, you know you 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 see diets are advertised. You know, it's a slimming world, uh, Weight Watchers, yeah, um, or you know like oh, um, I just thought of one. Sorry. Go on, no, right. it's, it's, it's on, but have you ever heard of a gastric balloon? Yeah, well, I have not. But like, I, I thought I saw it and thought of you. I'm like, what the fuck's a gastric balloon? But that people that are getting gastric balloons as a, a, a like an alternative to diet, just like dieting. Just dieting. Yeah, yeah. They normally reserve that for you. Can't do that electively. I don't think in this I country. Think you can. Yeah, you can buy it privately. You, no, but you have to qualify for it by being like ludicrously obese. They don't just give it to anyone. I don't think that's true. Let me Google it. Carry on. We've had diets. Yeah, so what I was going to say, you, you could extend that. Those are. Um, I'm not digging out Weight Watchers, by the way, but um, you could extend that past that to stuff like, you know, South Beach diet and can you name some more, George? I don't fucking know. Um, you know, the Atkins diet and all that shit. Um, I, we have touched on this before, but w- what I hate about it is the fact that they're, they're all, I mean, like, wait, what, if people follow Weight Watchers and they, they lose weight and that's their goal, then I'm happy, right, if it's facilitated that. But what irritates me is that what elicits the loss of fat in any um, kind of diet regimen is the reduction of calories. And what irritates me about it is you, you don't need to follow Slimming World or Weight Watchers or whatever to to lose weight. So I, I wish more people understood. It was just, it's a, you, you, you have more freedom, right? If yeah. you Because, you okay, Weight Watchers tells you you can eat as many potatoes as you want. I think that's right. Or that's you, right, yeah, yeah. yeah? If I could eat as many potatoes as I wanted, I would be fucking huge. I would gain ridiculous amounts of weight. But there are people, nobody really gets excited about potatoes. So if they told you, well, you can have a slice of cheesecake every day, you'd, you'd love that, wouldn't you? Okay. Yeah. You could call it a cheesecake diet or something like that. But the the, the, the salient fact is the fact that you, um, you you elicit weight loss by just being in a calorie deficit. Yeah. So why, can, why make it more complex or um, convoluted than it needs to be, right? fad diets just don't exist and I wish I could just tell everyone just eat less and move a bit more you know you don't need to be packaging I, it I'm, I, I will commit this okay, cool. I'll commit it although having said that I, I think you, you didn't think about that uh, close enough because what about all the people that do Weight Watchers and actually um, it's, you know it, it helps them yeah but fundamentally they'll be a calorie deficit they'll well, go, yeah, just, although I can eat all the potatoes because they're zero sins I've chose not to like, I'm I sure as shit I've lost weight how do they choose what foods are like zero because to me it makes no sense they'll say shit like pineapple is zero or like bananas are zero and pineapple's not zero and I'm like what <laughs> anyway I've done some uh, detailed research into this gastric balloon because um, it turns out all you need to, the criteria criteria is you've got to be over 18 years old and have a BMI between 25 and 50. Yeah, so that's overweight. Yeah, but isn't BMI sort of subjective? Yeah. It's, are you, are you'd be considered over, would you be considered? No, no? I wouldn't be. No, but, you've got, I mean, like, no, you're I'm, thick, aren't you? You've got like muscles I'm, and I'm stuff. A, I'm, probably, I'm probably a bad example now. But like the, it's, but BMI is like a whole different issue. Like the BMI is a stupid way to, uh, to gauge a person's health based on weight, right? But for the majority of the population, the majority of the population don't actually exercise and yeah. don't have large amounts of muscle mass and low amounts of body fat. It, it, it's, a, it's a useful metric for doctors. I understand why they use it. Right. But um, I mean, if you, if you don't exercise and like eat properly and your, 20, your BMI is 25 or higher, you are overweight. So I mean like- Well, there's got to be a difference between, so like if you're at 25 and you just go into a bit of a calorie deficit, you might be able to lose like six- six pounds maybe and that will get you back under 25 but yeah. if you're at 25 and then you can purchase on this website a gastric balloon for guess how much it costs you buy the balloon or the bus procedure the procedure you get on tick not percent mate oh I don't, I don't know what do they do is it is it like a uh why do they call it a balloon because it's a balloon that goes into your stomach so it fills up this the it capacity put, and then you can only eat a little you can only eat small amounts so you, you're like a, a baby bird then you've got to eat every hour <laughs> Look at his face. Fuck sake. Um, <laughs> I don't know how much it costs. Uh, it was, what is it like Booper or Nuffield or what the fuck? No, no, these are all like privates, man. Like these. Yeah, are... that is Booper. It's private. No, it's not Booper though. It's not. It's just a some some random company. Some random, yeah. 
of me. I just, I just, I just but, um, we have to cut that, George, because I just went back on my own thing that I tried to put in room 101. It's not random, is it? It's not oh, a random company. Don't cut that, George. Keep that shit in. You got it wrong. I just, that's what I say, man. It's just it's pervasive, isn't it? But I, um, I don't know how much it is. <laughs> Fucking 2,000, 4,000 quid. Was it 2,000 or 4,000? 3,000. <laughs> <laughs> so it's anywhere from 4,000. Mate, we 6, can't do any more of these at one o'clock. I'm dying here. 4,000, 4,000. Between 4,000 and 6,000 pounds. Was it far off, is it? Um, but can, you can see why people are returning to that because they're going, you know what? I can't. Fuck a calorie deficit for six months. I'll just. Uh, you're still going to eat, eat less. Reason. It's just a question. So you're just manipulating your body's um, ability to tell you it's hungry because you've got something in your stomach. Just have some fucking self control. People are going to give me shit for being, um, I forget what the word is now, but I, I think because there are people that have those procedures. This is what concerns me because I know like people are, are grossly obese. Can have, it's a whole kind of uh, mental battlefield, right? And yeah. it's, it, I'm not saying it's easy, but, um, and there can be multiple reasons that people get overweight and stay overweight. But the problem with that is like, I've seen a bunch of documentaries where people have gastric bands or balloons or sleeves or whatever. And they still want to eat so much that they end up like hurting themselves because they they they, they still eat to the point. Oh, because the stretch, like yeah, 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 yeah that makes they'll, sense. But like, they'll, I've seen, I heard about people with that. You know, you get a cuff around their uh, the top of the stomach. Is that the band? Towards them or whatever, and then that's yeah, and it's so it's they don't feel as hungry and they can't eat as much, but they still want to pile it on. Uh, you know, they still want to eat, so they end up like ruining it. So they could pay four grand and then it, poof, you know, like oh god, yeah, and you never know what's gonna happen. So I think. I mean, it, that, that will probably have some application for people that are grossly obese. I'm Absolutely, talking people yeah, that are like yeah. really, 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 really overweight. Um, but even then, I think you usually see stuff like that. They have to prove to a physician or something that they're capable of. You would like to think so, wouldn't you? Maybe that's if they get it on their NHS or something. I don't know. Maybe you, anyone could buy it, like you say. Who knows? Right. So my next one is. Oh, I've got, I've got a couple here. How much so this do you one, hate? You hate more stuff than I do. <laughs> no, this was actually from my missus. She was like, people that put empty sweet wrappers back in the sweet box <laughs> you know, at Christmas. <laughs> She's like, you do do that. I'm like, do you do that? I do. I think I, I, maybe I do. Yeah. That didn't bother me. I mean, I'm, pro- I, I'm not one of those people that does that or does not. I don't think, but um, I don't think that's that, that big of a deal, is it? I, I, you know, I, I kind of get it. Like if you, if you know, like celebrations. Yeah, but there's, you'd be eating those on Christmas day. Yeah. You wouldn't really want to get up and put them in a bin, would you? Yeah, so exactly. You, but the, I get like, it. in celebrations, there might, there's like th- three Maltesers. That's it. So you eat the Maltesers. You're like, it's always like that ditch to the end where you've just got a box of like bounties. I kind of <laughs> wonder, I, I kind of understand it because yeah, then if people might think from oh, the distance, see. they they're still yeah, going to get yeah. that, uh, they get the purple one out of, in the, in the, what's that the one? Quality street. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they're not going to get it because the rapper's still there. So, yeah, I don't know if we can put that in room 101 though. Cause I mean, I think everyone's probably done that at some point. George, what you saying? Do you put me back in the, in the box? Sometimes, I think it's more annoying when you find a sewing kit in there. A sewing yeah. kit? What? <laughs> George just said. Like, it's you your grams, right? And it's just got like a tin of quality. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. <laughs> they yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. use the, the t- quality street tin yeah. to so store okay. things. Yeah, so you found something sweet and your nan's your nan's put like a sewing kit in there what kind of you got like a you got a discount granny there man like my grand's <laughs> always got shit in the house mate. if i want to if i went to my grandma's there's not a chance <laughs> ever granny. she's not gonna have such shit in there i can't i can almost never go to my grand's without eating something uh is that, is that, no, is that a no then i think nah yeah we can't really put that in there all think. right um a couple of quick ones then um People who recline their seats on airplanes, or the, I, don't know, I think it's the same person that, that puts the feet up and sticks the toes through, you know, the side bit. So they like toes are creepy. Have you seen the memes like that on TikTok? Like, I'd be beating some, I'd be biting some of his fucking toes off if they did that to me. I can't, you know what? Like I remember one of the first times I went to the cinema with with, uh, with Linz. <laughs> she put her legs up on the seat in front. There's nobody in it. But I said, no, don't. You're not a person, are you? We might have to cut this off right now. I, I can't. Why are you putting your feet up on stuff? Like somebody's got to put their head there later. You can't have anything on your feet. This goes back to the using the um, the hairdryer on yeah. your balls. Like somebody's got, to, like you said, somebody's got to sit there later. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. I think that yeah, the reclining. I feel like that's incumbent upon the airline not to have it though. You know, like I yeah. think if you put it there, because the thing is, then how do you know who's the only person that's accountable is the first person that does it. Because then yeah. you're like you're you if you don't put it back, you're limiting your own space. Yeah, yeah. So I think the, I think we should just it's like a domino effect. We, we should just say the recline button on airlines, unless you're in business class. 
<laughs> what a cock. <laughs> In that case, you're not offending anyone because, you, you know, you've got your own personal space. But that's what I think we should... I, I would commit that to Room 101, for sure. Uh, at the drop of a hat. Yeah. All right. Next one. So you're on your plane. Fella at front's reclined his seat. So it's reclined back. And you go, I'm going to be... I'm going to be a, a, a top bloke here and I'm going to watch my, my film that's now three <laughs> inches away from my face. It's like watching IMAX. <laughs> <laughs> and you think, oh, I'll, I know what I'll watch. I'll watch Taken 2. Sequels to films that should never be made. Oh, yeah. Taken was a banger of a film, right? Yeah. Taken two, three, four. You've almost picked the... What the fuck else are they going to steal? The, 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 I mean, there is no four, but yeah. <laughs> you, you you picked a good example as well, because take the first Taken is a fucking super... It's a really good sleeper hit, right? They didn't think it was going to do that yeah. well at the time. Um, and it's a great film. And yeah, you're right. Two was atrocious. I think three was actually slightly better than two. It's kind of followed the diehard trajectory. Um... But the worst culprit for that's got to be Fast and Furious. I mean, like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Which one are we on now? Fucking, it's got to be. I, I think they've got to a point now where you've got to do 10 because it's just like round it up. You don't want to stop on nine, do you? They maybe have done 10 already. I, I wouldn't know. But it was like that with Police Academy, wasn't it? Like, I mean, you've got, there is an art, isn't there, in knowing when to stop. People will listen to this thinking, you fucking stop making videos, mate. <laughs> <laughs> stop making this podcast. Stop this podcast. Um, but no, I, I agree with you there. That, that, that extends to TV shows as well. Like, why do they still make The Simpsons? Come on, man. Yeah, true. That, that golden age has been over so long. I mean, that, that was one of the good things about Forty Towers, right? 11 episodes. Green Wing. I don't know if anyone ever watched Green Wing on Channel 4. That went for two two series. And then they killed it, Stone Dead. And it was it's good because of that. It's like Did you ever watch Shit's Creek? No, I didn't. I heard that's good, though. Is I think the guy, guy from uh, American Pie? Yeah, Jim's, uh, dad? Jim's dad and Jim's dad's son in real life. Jim's dad's son. What's Whatever. he called, that guy? Uh, John, uh, Levy. Um, Daniel Levy and... Eugene... Eugene Levy. That's it. That's him. Oh, they... Oh, right, okay. The actual father and son. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. So they, they've done... I think they did six series and then they've, like, the... the but I think they still went a bit, like... Went That's a little bit, bit too, too far. far. But at least they, did, they didn't let it go too far. No, no, no. They, too, too far. They, had, they said, like, as, a, as an artistic choice, they said, right, we are going to... This is it. We're cutting it off at this point. And the story is sort of round up nicely. So yeah, I think that's. I think that's a lot of that's like um, American TV things that go on for it. Like they still make The Walking Dead, don't they? Jesus, man! <laughs> Do you watch like, CSI? No, but that's a bit different because that's, that's almost like a soap to me. CSI, oh, you know. Okay. So you, you accept that it's just going to go on forever, and you you know you just tune in. For, yeah. I mean, I've never watched CSI. <laughs> tell you the truth, but um, yeah, and I think um, it kind of follows that. that T the, the, the TV series go on too long now, though, you know? Um, I, th I think that's one good thing like, about generally British produced stuff is, is typically more self-aware. Yeah. They're willing to just, you know, pull good. the plug in. Well, are you committing to that to Room 101? It's hard to because there are some instances which would fall within that, that I think, for example, I mean, I've not seen it, but the new Top Gun just came out, right? Which I know it's not the same thing, mm -hmm. but there is a certain kitsch value in remaking, you know, in coming back after a long absence. Have you seen the uh, most recent Bad Boys? Is that any good? Because Bad Boys 2 I, are I, bad, I better like, than Bad Boys 1. I don't like Bad Boys. I'm not really a big fan of it, yeah. to tell you the truth. I mean, it's, it's all right, but um, a, a good, I mean, Rambo, the Ram <laughs> which one was it? Like, I, I don't like the Rambo movies that much. I mean, they're all right. But like when they when he came back and did that one, it was a bit of a kind of like. Uh, Maybe if you are having to go, Ram which one is it? There's probably too many of them in there. Yeah, you probably, yeah. Well, I think it was four, right? <laughs> but um, Rocky, right? I mean, that you f five was a stretch too far, right? Stay with me on this one. <laughs> so, so it goes one, two, <laughs> I'm going to say three, four. One, probably one, two, four, three. You just forget five, but then Rocky Balboa, which would have been six when yeah. it comes back, is a fucking class film. People, I mean, for, for this, you know, for a boxing film. Um, so I, I don't know. Nah, I I'm kind of with you, but I don't think we can in Star Wars. No, no, I'm not either. But that's even more confusing, <laughs> isn't it? Because they, they, they go like they they go like present time, then they go backwards, and they go forwards. Lad, if you start, if we just both said on <laughs> camera that we're 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 not into Star Wars, we're gonna lose ha lose half <laughs> the subscribers. <laughs> I don't dislike it. I can enjoy it, but um, I I appreciate what Star Wars meant at the time, and the original got... trilogy. Um. But yeah, I'm, I'm kind of with you. Like shit films that go on too long. Can is we it, say that? Is it? So we've committed then. Have we committed this to 
Star Wars no, is going. There are too, no. <laughs> too many things that book the trend. If you're saying sequels oh, right, aren't allowed, okay. Maybe that one. All right. two's better than one, for example. It's rare right. that that happens. But. All right, well, I put it out to our YouTube, uh, YouTube, our Instagram audience, which were mental because I put it out and within an hour, this must be like, this, I reckon this is going to be a good podcast because like within an hour we had fucking pages of yeah. responses, yeah. So we'll sort of quick fire it. We're in no rush, but we'll sort of quick fire it. We'll have a little discussion if you feel like it's necessary for certain ones. All right. Uh, and I'll let you be the, uh, the judge Okay. Um, get that um, sound effect ready. <laughs> if that's the sound effect that you choose, George. Right, so... You get some from Epidemic Sound, I think, I'm sure. <laughs> Mr. Gaz T put, obnoxiously tall people at gigs. How the fuck can... Uh, you can't decide height. No, I think that's... Can you, can, nobody can decide their height, can they? I, I think that's, that's just... Yeah, you... But buy some of those clothes... Uh, no, those shoes that make you... you know, not high heels, but... Well, maybe you could buy high heels, I don't know. But uh, <laughs> buy some things that make you taller. So no, that, that's I think no. that's no. I, I, it is annoying, but I mean, the person cannot help that, can they? I mean, come on. Janice underscore rider underscore N4 said, repetitive noises, foot tapping, pen clicking, stupid woman in wakey yesterday repeating her vote for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'm the... I'm the worst fidgeter, I think. I said it at the Earth. beginning. You were like this. I'm always like... doing stuff like that. Lynn's hits because like, I'll be always like, like finger drumming in the car and stuff. So I just, from a personal perspective, like it would be hypocritical of me to say that that's going in room 101. Sorry. Okay, right. Next, K16664, having to work bank holidays. I mean... We're self-employed. No, nah, yeah, a bank holiday. I didn't, even, I didn't even know Thursday was a bank holiday. Friday, Thursday and Friday, was it? Yeah, I don't know. I'm looking at George. <laughs> I've looked at him for everything today. Um, nah, I mean, if, oh, if you, you sign the contract of employment, presumably, <laughs> and if, if you didn't, join a union. <laughs> E-working dead girl, uh, but chewing with your mouth open and o <laughs> OM OMFG, the start of episode one on season three of The Boys. I don't know what the fuck that is. I've not seen that, but I'll tell you what, one I could have picked is... Uh, making acronyms for no fucking reason. <laughs> like OMFG, is it, is it that hard to say the full phrase? Uh, maybe she was like, commit, like <laughs> she was loose on characters on that one. Um, yeah, nah. I mean, I, I, I certainly can't give a judgment on that. I probably eat my mouth open all the time. I'm not, not improbable. I, I definitely do. <laughs> God, you're not committing any here. You don't have, you don't have to use that um, We've committed sound lots. effect. We've committed commit a lot so far. So. Steve J038. People thinking Queen made good music. Oh, come off it now. Like, I mean, I'm not the biggest Queen fan uh, on the, planet Earth. The foot in brackets, excluding Flash. I like Flash. The Flash Gordon sounds, that's like one of their worst. Right, come on now. Right. <laughs> Look, right, right. Look, this, right. This, actually, this actually goes back, this qualifies in some way what I was saying about the music gatekeeping thing, right? Because ah. I'm not a huge fan of Queen. I don't love Queen. But you cannot say that Queen make bad music. If you've heard the song Bohemian Rhapsody, how Can you give they... the rendition, please, for those that might not know where it is? Uh... I'm just a little silhouette of a man, scaramouche, scaramouche. <laughs> See that false, I should be singing in falsetto every time, like the Bee Gees. Um, you know, you can't say, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of Queen, but like, um, in fact, a dude nearly kicked me out of his restaurant about three months ago when I told him to turn the Queen off and said, I'm not a huge fan of Queen. And he was like, <laughs> I was like, I'm joking, mate. I'm still turning music off, so I don't get a copyright claim, but I, <laughs> Queen are all right. Um, yeah, nah, nah, come on, no. Nah. Right, GR underscore Davey. Slow walkers. Yeah, but then you go back to the whole humanitarian thing is you can't oh, just he's like- he's such you, a man of the people. He's, no, he's like just, a politician, he's no, out of it. He's like fucking say, slippery, slidey, it, snaky. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> it does irritate me. We, we, I went, that comes down to being spatially unaware, I think, but yeah. um, you, I can't snap my fingers and say every slow walker on planet Earth goes in room 101. Same person, um, GR Davis said, uh, people smoking in front of you in public. I could just, I could just straight put smoking in there. Fucking filthy habit. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is a funny one. Barney, my, dad, my dad used to do it. That's why I don't like it. Barney underscore and underscore Joe. So Barney and Joe. Vegetarian meatballs. Nothing wrong with the product. <laughs> just the name. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, Let's get that in room. I agree with you there. Because you, what, can you just call them veggie balls? Veggie balls has a better ring to it, I think. Oh, yes. I like that. Right, we've, we've, well, you've we've got the supermarket. It. I'm just going to buy some veggie balls. <laughs> veggie meatballs sounds daft, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that one. All right, man underscore Callum. I'm assuming he's called Callum Man. As uh, as put, when you're in Greg's and they ask, it's cold, is that okay? Do they do that? Yep. Do you know that? No, I, I, so, don't, I, I so don't eat at Greg's ever. Greg's, right? The reason they get away with uh, not having to pay like pie tax is because <laughs> they officially don't keep the food hot, so they don't have to pay VAT. 
That's why. It, ah, I must have eaten a warm sausage roll from Greg at some yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, but the point is, is like whatever time they bake them at, they just go in the little press thing, but they're not. It's not a heated press, so they go. All the pastas oh, go cold. So the earlier in the day you get it. Yes, yeah, so if you roll in at three o'clock and they're like, it's oh, sorry, it's cold because cold. it came out of the oven at ten o'clock this morning. You're like ah, fuck. Oh, I suppose you got to take the rough with the smooth there. If you're getting it cheaper, you can't complain that it's cold. Sorry. <laughs> G underscore Knowles 95 put, ordering the worst plate of food when eating at a restaurant with a group of people. Nah, come on. So that's man. food envy? Nah, you could, uh, oh, he's like. Yeah, so like you, you, you're there with your crew. So like, we're all there. So it's a bit like when we go out to eat. We'll go and have a steak and have a, like a nice meal and you'll be like, fuck, I'm eating a, a fucking meter of meatballs tomorrow that are vegetarian. I'm going to have a salad. And you're like, ah, nah, I just, just want to eat the steak, man. No, I, don't th- I thought the, the, my interpretation of that was that some somebody's ordered the worst plate of food and it offends them. So like if we go out for food and George orders a fucking cheese slice on a some white bread or something, <laughs> I, but I don't No, nah, that's personal preference, right? You can't you can't be mad about um, if you've ch- chosen something, it's your responsibility. <laughs> All right. Uh, Joel underscore Higgins has said. Has Joel said something before? I recognize that name. Possibly. If uh, so, hi, Joel. Having the big light on in the middle of the day or just when you're watching TV at night. You could tell this bloke's from the north. <laughs> the big having light. the big light on. Um, no, I do that all the time. We should have big light pro- on pro- in the middle of the day. Pro- probably less uh, so now, like, energy's literally twice as expensive. But um, <laughs> if, it's, if it's dark, I mean, England's dark, like, 75% of the year during the day. So, um, no, nah, nah, that's not going to move on one. This one, I'll, I'm going to commit in advance. Can we just All get right. the sound effect, please? What's well, Prince Andrew again? <laughs> George is going to be raging. Just having to, having to like put that in the edit all the time. Fucking hell. Will underscore Mitchell 98. The overzealous use of the word delicious. <laughs> I guess I'm guilty of that, yeah. And you, you're probably right, right yeah. Because I think I probably do overcook it a little bit. But I'm just trying to be nice at the restaurant owners, I think, more than anything. I'm not going to say, yeah, this is... Just, it's a it's a four out of ten from me. <laughs> um, Loch Ness. I like that. Yeah, uh, we sh- we actually shared their uh, Instagram. They were watching us last last night at late night. We, big light, we're off. Remember, you could watch us late at night. Yeah, you you replied to me saying there's a. Oh, there's, there's there's a, a one that looked like there was a bump in the cover. Yeah, I'm not averse to that. Whatever floats your boat. Uh, people who. <laughs> People who throw beers at gigs. Oh, yeah, I'm with you there because if you've ever been at least, or certainly when I went to Lee's Festival back in the day when I was young, you never know if it's a beer or, a, uh, you know, a glass full of piss. <laughs> Plastic glass. I don't think people throw actual glasses. Yeah, that, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't get that at all. For one, you're wasting the beer. And two, you're drenching somebody. And if you, when you smell a beer, it just smells horrible. Like mm. when it's actually, you know, it's wet and it's, because it's like fermented Barley and hops and shit, right? <laughs> why does why do it? I think it's just obnoxious. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll commit that one. Yeah. Sound effect. Uh, Loch Ness also said, um, Josh's laptop screen timing out on camera and seeing him wake it up. <laughs> 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 Which I, you might have noticed that that happened today because I, I found the setting. It turns out it, my laptop was on like the setting where it'll, it'll go onto the sleep screen at like 90 seconds, which were annoying to be fair. So thanks for pointing that out. I've rectified it. How many more are there? Do you get? I met this like five realize, pages. I yeah, there's loads. Kind of engagement. Yeah, I, did, I was shocked as well. Uh, Scott uh, Dumbbell candles on a table for a party bigger than two. They're just wrist burners with little emojis, little fire emojis. That seems oddly specific. Nah, come on, everyone loves candles. I can't put those in number one. <laughs> Mark Allen F. People chewing loudly and cilantro. What is cilantro? <laughs> oregano. That what we call oregano. Or is it, um, no, it's, it's the other one, isn't it? Basil, it's one of the, one of the herbs, herbs. See, the, the emoji that's with it looks like a, um, like a bar of soap. Cilantro. It's a herb of some. Oh, it's coriander. Ah, I knew it was one of those. Uh, I don't mind coriander. It's not offensive to me. Um, <laughs> and what was the first part? Chewing loudly. People chewing loudly. We've had that one, haven't we? I mean, you've got to be the judge of that. I can't, I chew, I, I try not to chew loudly, but. It's, uh, I, I don't think it's too bad. It depends if it, how often you're in that person's company. Um, there's nothing worse. So I, I found this, this, this when we were in trading at David, there were a couple of people like breathing loudly. That's fucking. Yeah. Imagine if we were. 
<laughs> Lindsay does that. Not only when she sleeps either. That's like, my dad's got Snapchat. He shouldn't have Snapchat. My dad's got Snapchat. And when he's like out fucking walking with my mum and there's like a cow in the field. <laughs> he's going to hate me for this. He'll send, he'll send a Snapchat. He'll be like, all you hear is like, <laughs> is he asthmatic? <laughs> no, I don't know why. It'll be on selfie camera. Oh, it? yeah. It's like, yeah, it's a self. I'm like, for fuck's sake, dad. Just mute it. Just do like, whatever. You're ruining the picture of a cow, that you, the video of a cow. Um, so, yeah, I get that. I do get it. Right. Uh, people that talk. Uh, so, this is from d23.coats. People that talk during films. Oh, yeah. That's the reason I never go to cinema anymore. Sorry. What is that? That's a long hair, that. I think that's that's got to be off your head. Oh, and it's like all nodded in there. It's a blonde hair. Oh. Definitely Mrs. Beard. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah, that's the reason I don't go to the cinema anymore because it just winds me up. Um, but I get, it's hard to put people in a room with a woman because it just seems, it's, 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 it's a little bit, uh, it's like eugenics or something. Like you put, you're putting people in, in a, in a, in a, in a I think it's annoying, but I don't think you can really put it in one, can you? <laughs> uh, my mate Andrew McLeod uh, is a photographer and he's just put, want a collab? Uh, have, you heard of, have you had DMs like that before? I'm assuming he's getting it from like people who just want a free photo shoot. Yeah, I mean, if it's, I just hate the fact that people say collab. Like collaborate's not a long word, is it? I mean, like just get a grip. Um, I think <laughs> it, the misuse of the word collab maybe is what he's getting at. You know, like when people, like if if I get a, a message from Randy, who we're talking, Randy Santel, we're oh, talking yeah. about, and he says, do you want to, he, he would say, do you want to do a video together? He probably wouldn't say, do you want to collab? But if he did, it, be like, I get it, because he wants to do a video together. It's when brands say, do, do you want to collab? And you, what they actually mean is, do you want to advertise our shit? Yeah. Um, for exposure. For, for exposure. <laughs> so uh, as a photographer, I imagine he gets that uh, a lot. From, maybe from famous people that want to get their wedding f- photograph for free. Which I would never do. Oh, uh, yeah. I'd pay. I'm, I'm doing somebody's flipping wedding for free, Anna. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Coming thing, to man. a wedding near you, you've got Adam, you've got beer and meat food for it in a camera. I might just, I might just caveat that by saying, like, I'll, I'll only do it if I can wear a truck suit or well, something. If I were you, I'd just go, you know what? I'll just pay for an actual wedding videographer to come and do it. If I had mega books like you, maybe I would. Fuck off. <laughs> he's, just, he's one of those little, like, um, what's that meme? Um, Leonardo DiCaprio, you're like, oh, business class. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking That's a prick. deductible? Shut up. Is that, we, have we got any more? Man, it's fucking loads. I'm going to have to keep going. Oh, right. Uh, I'll shout out to um, to Randy. He's coming over. He says he'll come on our podcast. Yeah, I don't know if we've got room for him. He's a big lad. Yeah? How big is he? That wasn't a fat joke, by the way, before it's people tall. start jumping. He looks like a tall friends. dude. Oh, yeah, he's a unit, man. He met, you keep talking about how, how tall you are. He's like 6'6", six, six, I think, at least. And his wife's in like mega nick. Is it wife or girlfriend? I don't think she's his wife, no. All um, right. She was, she was a competitive, uh, I don't know about professional, but she was a competitive bodybuilder. Yeah, yeah, she's in like really good shape, oh, isn't she? Yeah, well, I don't want to get too leery about Randy's. Um, it was more a compliment, we were just paying compliment. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I suppose so. Um, we did mention before about shortening words, which the irony is not lost on me for this next one. Uh, char underscore baby. So clearly they've shortened their name for the Instagram handle. That's uh, all right, though. I mean, short, sometimes you have to. Shortening words like brekkie, cuppa, et cetera. I see, we're probably kindred spirits though, because like I, I mean, uh, Bre- Brecky's like I kind of get it because it's just part of how you grow up and how you learn language. People say Brecky from when you're young, but I think some things just don't need to be shortened. So I, I think we're probably being pedantic, but like I would kind of agree. All right, yeah. Uh, rest in peace, Mike Affenden has commented. When competitive eaters leave skids in your toilet bowl, <laughs> <laughs> it should be. Well, I mean, it depends on the competitive eater, doesn't it? That should be a. Lad, you did it. You came here after we did the uh, the barbecue thing. George, you weren't here at the time. And he dropped one in. The, we've got communal toilets at the top of <laughs> in, in the office building. What do you want me to do? And There's no dropped, brush in there. There fucking is a brush in there. There's been a brush in there forever. I think toilet brushes are gross anyway. <laughs> Why do they, they get, get those in room 101? Right, right. Commit that. Toilet brushes and beard beats food. <laughs> right. So just Michael running underscore 79. People still calling me Mike when I've told them my name is Michael Angry Face. All right, Mike. I mean, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, to be honest, like when I was a, a kid or when I was a little bit younger, I used to hate people calling me Ad. Not to the point I would tell them to stop, but I used to. Do used Lindsay to, call you Ad? No. I, she, I feel like I've heard of. I feel, no, she never no? calls me. No, she calls me Adam. Or if she's mad at me, she calls me Adam Paul because that's my <laughs> middle name. I should, probably shouldn't have said that. People like should impersonate me now. <laughs> Right, Will 1990 Smith, people using the word literally when they mean figuratively. Yes, Will. Yes, Will. 
we send that man some breaking beans? <laughs> if you want. Well, if you is there any way to corroborate that it's a real man? Well, yeah, we'd have to well, DM him. Well, if you listen to this now, you got this far into this fucking podcast. <laughs> Messages will send you some blonde and slender. Is that what we're doing now? We're going to send out free coffee. That's like know. random. For, that's Just an incentive. Idea. That's an incentive for people to. Uh, <laughs> what if it's then poisoned? <laughs> End up killing. I'm joking. It's not poisoned. <laughs> Josh underscore I gent mullets. Just just mullets. That's it. Nah, I can't on the, purely on the grounds of uh, Kiefer Sutherland in Lost Boys. Best mullet of all time. We, we, I, I'm, I'm not committing that to room 101. Sorry. Roger that. Uh, Tom Steer 710 has put people people who call Adidas Adidas. No, I'm not the kind of person that gets my knickers in a twist about, you know, intonation, how pr- people pronounce stuff. I th- it's based on where you're born, you know, right? I, I think Americans say that. It's like, it's like they say Nike. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't even know what's right. Probably Nike is right and we say Nike. Probably, yeah. But Jody. Me- Judy Mary, um, yeah, that's right. Um, pet Instagrams, the ones where captions are written as if it's by the pet but with a sick face no. emoji. Do those exist? Oh yeah. Oh no. Joe Rogan's got one. Rogan's dog's got a fucking Instagram. What's the dog called? Marshall Rogan. It's got more Marshall's fault. a person name. That's not a fucking dog <laughs> name. It's like calling your dog Stephen or something. Yeah, let's get those in room one oh one. Yeah. There goes Joe Rogan's dog. That's all our listeners gone now. <laughs> uh, right. Daniel Mason, two and a half. How many more of them? fucking loads. I've, I've skipped a few of them. <laughs> Flip flops with socks. See, that's when Mike could do that. I, I don't give enough of a shit to put that in room 101. <laughs> like, if you want to dress like that, dress like that. Um, Gus Theory Optimal has put drivers that do, don't wave thank you. Yeah, that comes in like, I, I really dislike when, you know, if you hold the door open for somebody and they don't say thank you. So I guess that's kind of in the same thing. But again, I, I'm, I'm reluctant to put people in room 101. Um, so I just would encourage them to do better. All right. All right. So, um, door, dark tricks. I said, being rude to customer service people, fuck off with your entitlement. Yeah, I mean, I, I, being rude's not never good, right? So Is that, unless, you, it's you a, it? unless it's two belligerent train conductors, and which case I'm fully in support. Of it. All right, two more. There's fucking loads, man. All right, just two more, man. I, otherwise, I'm gonna faint. <laughs> Rosso eight six one one. People mispronouncing things like espresso springs to mind. There's no fucking X exclamation. Yeah, mark. when people say espresso. Yeah, I feel like it's, that, that's maybe not willful ignorance. So people perhaps just don't know better sometimes. I, I, everything, everyone I think has mispronounced something in their, their life, right? Last one, Daniel VDB7 has put WhatsApp voice notes. Now, before you comment, right, we've got to discuss this, this, this one. This motherfucker sends them all the time. <laughs> watch the, like, Ooh, what? I'm too busy to type. Watch I this send the voice note. I want to see if, I want to see if you, this will bring us back. I thought it was really funny. Found it on TikTok. All right, it's not about balls and dick, is it again? Hey, listen, I don't know about you, but I love me a voice note. You know why? Because they're like little phone calls <laughs> that you answer when you're ready. I like sending them, receiving them, deleting them. <laughs> However, there's three things I don't like, which is when the voice note cuts off too <laughs> early and you got to repeat yourself. <laughs> you're a joker. That's what I was trying <laughs> to say. <face. laughs> <laughs> when people send me long voice notes. Me and Ryan sitting there watching it. And then we see you pop up. We're just like, oh my God, oh shit. And then I was going to wake up and say, this fucking gold, it's a this voice content. Note, not a podcast. But the worst is playing back your own voice notes, having to listen to your own voice. Yeah, I like the sound of that. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> All right, catch you later, babe. All right, bye. Yeah, I like the sound of that. I'm not going to lie. All right, I'll catch you later. What the <laughs> This is like one of those try to laugh challenges. Is that supposed to be funny? I thought it was funny. Sorry to that dude. Like, I mean, it's, it's clearly appealing to some people there. Like in in, in uh, the man's an actual real life comedian. I like the the, the uh, Axel the, Blake. Uh, all right, okay. He's got a cool name. That's a re- he must be. Uh, that sounds like a hard, he's probably like a fourth Dan in like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or something. <laughs> he's got a hard case name, and I like the fact that he went to the effort of doing the transition, which everyone does now. Oh, the old camera over the lens. Hey. <laughs> All right, Casey, nice that. Um, but I think it's just that it's on TikTok and I'm predisposed to hate everything that's on TikTok. Um, but I, I, I think, no, voice notes are all right. Like when you send them to me, I think it's because either you're driving, 
so you shouldn't be sending them anyway. Um, or you're like <laughs> ultra busy doing something and you still want to converse with me with like relative urgency. Yeah. Because I'm the opposite. So if you send me something like you frequently do, like Adam, can you send me this picture for, to overlay on the podcast? And I reply five hours later because I'm out filming or something. Because I, I get it and I see it and I'm just like, nah, that's, I'm, yeah. I'm doing that later. So I think it probably shows, uh, if anything, that you care about your interaction with that person. Yeah, I like voice notes. I'm, I don't particularly like typing on a on a phone. Me, I'm I'm more of a Why phone not? call. We'll just call then. The you, problem you, is I don't have the odd number. Right. <laughs> so like, I, 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 we've known each other what four years more probably. Probably more. Yeah. And I I genuinely phoned him. <laughs> I don't know, fucking, true story, George. Three weeks ago, I phoned him before I went to London. Yeah. I found, again, last minute, we we're trying to get stuff booked. I phoned him. <laughs> And then it's like, this lady answers, hello, Mrs. Beard. And I'm like, hello. And she's like, hello. I'm like, yeah, is Adam, I'm like, I'm like ringing you like your mum up or something. <laughs> is Adam there? Cause I need to speak to him, it's Josh. Oh, all right, Josh. And you're in the background going, who is it? <laughs> I'm off to the gym. Yeah, I was about to train. You didn't fucking save my number. No, I, I didn't. Cause you usually contact me on WhatsApp. You don't normally call me like through the normal phone uh, process, but uh <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's how that played out. I said, oh, I can't even bother with that. I'm not answering it. And then Lindsay was just like, oh, I'll answer it. And then it turned out to be you. What a prick. I like voice notes though. I, again, I don't like typing. So it's to get my point across, I'll try like, just quick in it. Just voice note, it's gone. I guess maybe it's just that a person's, you know, character and personality. I, I, I never send them. Plus for my like retention, like if I come out of meetings and I've got to send something to Leanne and it's like, I need to remember it. I'll That's, just, I'll, you're one of those I'll just brain dump it. You're then, one of those knobheads in the 1990s. You'd have had a dictaphone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're making your voice notes on your dictaphone. They give it to your secretary. Um, yeah, no, nah, they're not for me, but I wouldn't put them in the uh, room 101. I see the utility in them to certain people. Roger that, mate. Well, that's the that's the end of that podcast. I, I, I think that's a pretty, I think we're going to divide the audience don't, there. Don't you feel cleaner? I feel clean, like I've got some stuff off my chest. I, <laughs> I feel knackered though. At the same time, <laughs> you look knackered, mate. I know. Like, it's half past two, and you're like I can't flagging. Like, podcast in the afternoon, it kills me, man. Especially when I'm not eating all day. But I, I tried my best. You did well, mate. Are we, are we got any? Uh, we got any? Uh, anything on the horizon? What, can we get, tease what's going to be next week or no? No, because we don't know. <laughs> I actually don't know which one's coming out next week. We've had, we have a tease about Randy. He's coming on the show. Um, hopefully, when he he's gets, not signed the contract though, so he might he might still say nah. Where uh, is it, Morley? No. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You've told everyone where we are. We have to move now. Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad thing. I don't think. But anyway, no, mate. That's it. Um, for those that have, I hope you've enjoyed it. Comment below with uh, any of your Room One Hundred One suggestions. If you haven't already, pick up a bag of breaking beans to support the show. We've sold two bags it last month. So two. No, I'm joking. We sold a couple of bags. People we enjoy it. We sold quite a few, didn't we? You told me. Some sales metrics. Not enough to cover rent, but we'll get there. No, but it's, it's a smart, it's plugging the gap of that hemorrhage, right? Like if that was a, if it was a bullet wound, this would be, this would be the gauze in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Any final words from you, Mr. Beard? Uh, no, mate. Just uh, let us know in the, in the comments um, what you want to see us talk about next um because this was uh I, I i i dreamed this up out of nowhere and it, although it was it was fun um you know if you want to see, we're trying to make this inclusive a community thing so yeah. if you want to see us talk about something maybe something that's not eating related always because we try and get away from that we should start a discord server a what <laughs> <laughs> all the big creators do it now the no, creator, I, don't, I legitimately don't i don't know what that is a disc i don't know i don't really know what it is either uh, it sounds like something from uh the matrix or something. i just know that people do that so if anybody knows how to set up a Discord server and wants to manage it and we'd have to touch it <laughs> and get in touch with the show. Yeah. Right, catch you on the next one. Peace.